Hello, folks, and welcome to the FS Elite podcast. Our mission, talk all things flight sim. If it's made of polygons and it flies, it's fair game. And I'm your host, Nicholas Jackson, and joining me this episode is Mitch. How you doing, Mitch? I'm doing great. Thanks, Nick. As always, doing, uh, doing what I can with the flight sim community every single day. Uh, just helping out a few people right now and getting things straightened with the uh, Q400 re- recently. But uh, it's been a great week so far. How are you doing? Uh, I've been doing all right. I had video card issues. My video card was overheating. And uh, this is one of the dangers of smoking inside. So I found out what the problem was. I replaced my video card, but now my inevitable move to Seattle is being put off even further. So that that was been my week. But I got a few 737 legs in, and I got a triple uh, seven leg in. Twelve hours and thirty five minutes from San or from London to San Francisco, and it should have taken ten and a half. Don't ask me what happened there. It was an interesting one. Without any further delay, I'd like to introduce the team here uh, from FS Captain. And uh, FS Captain, just for a quick brief overview, is an ACAR system, much like FS Passengers, that simulates the experience of having passengers on board your airplane. Uh, You're also critiqued on your flying abilities and awarded by progressing up the career ladder and earning an ever-increasing virtual salary. The product was originally developed by Dutch. Peter and Travis uh, joined the team later. Uh, They started out as fans and then ended up on the team. They're now responsible for economic features as well as day-to-day maintenance, while Dutch works on improving the product interface. Welcome aboard, you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, We're glad to be here. Uh, This is Dutch talking to you. I'll introduce myself, and then we'll let Travis and Peter do the same. Uh, My name is obviously Dutch. I've been um, been a flight simulator uh, involved since release 1.00 on the PC, I believe it was 1.00. I remember the old uh, four-color uh, graphics of that thing, and I've been enjoying uh, occasionally flying in the simulated world ever since then. Uh, I am a real-world private pilot. We'll let Travis and Peter introduce themselves. Go ahead, guys. Hi, Nicholas. Mitch, I'm Travis. Um, I've been around in flight sim since the Radio Shack TRS-80 original flight simulator, which was, um, well, it was nice. And we've kept it on since here and um, got my private pilot license many years ago uh, using flight simulator to impress the flight instructor to say, hey, you think you know what you're doing? Show me. And we went from there. Yeah, hello, uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm uh, much younger than the other two. I'm only around since Flight Simulator 2, which still was developed by Sublogic uh, before Microsoft bought them. And uh, also my real-world experience is just uh, about 45 minutes at the yoke of a Cessna 172, but otherwise I just enjoy doing Flight Simulation and FS Captain. Oh, very cool, you guys. It's great to meet you all, and I'm so glad you're here. Let's start with just the basics. Um, how did the team get started? What motivated FS Captain? All right. Well, that's really two questions. I'll take the first one first. Um, uh, I'll, I enjoyed Flight Simulator, but uh, if you look carefully at what it's called, it's Flight Simulator. And when you fly in today's modern world, you actually fly in an aviation environment. There's a lot more involved than, than just flying your airplane, especially if you're a professional pilot. I may, had a career decision to make early in my life, whether I would go into aviation, which was a passion of mine, or software development, where you could make a lot more money at the time. I became a software developer, so I always had this dream of being an aviation person. So Flight Simulator sort of uh, sort of uh, satisfied that desire without being uh, too expensive. And I was a little frustrated that uh, Flight Simulator was a great flight simulation environment, but there were so many things missing that involved in professional aviation. So I set about developing a program on my own, just for myself, to fill in some of that gap. And then I really enjoyed that a lot, and I became aware, hey, you know, I should share this with the world. And so my original goal was to make a freeware version of this thing and just kind of distribute it and let people use it. But as the project grew and we, I encompassed more and more aspects of professional aviation, I realized it was just too big. and It was taking up too much of my time. 
And if I really want to do this right, I would have to get some money for it just because you got to have a roof over your head and, and something to eat. So I went ahead and developed FS Captain 1.00, which debuted on December 3rd, 2009, and we're up to 1.7.1 now. That's where it came from. It came from my personal uh, desire to get into this business and, and, and be a professional pilot in the most professional way I could. Along the way, a lot of people seem to be enjoying FS Captain, and this guy, Travis, really stood out in his... His questions, his knowledge, his depth, his passion, and so we got to know one another, and he worked his way onto the team, and I'll let Travis take over his story and Peter take over his. Well, then, okay, hi, I'm Trav. I wanted to be a pilot uh, in real life, and I used Flight Simulator up to 2004, FS9, to acquaint me with how pilots need to do the regular things. I impressed an instructor made several flights, got my license, and I'm thinking, I want to do something else. I want to do more than this. And I came across FS Captain, to which, you know, I'm flying in a Cessna 172 or 208, and FS Captain is an airline, uh, air transport pilot uh, simulation. So I installed it and found it gave me a sense of purpose to do things, to actually make flights. So um, I'm emailing Dutch, and I give him ideas, and we talk things, and fairly soon uh, we're a team, and we develop over the years. And then Peter came along when we were talking about doing an economic aspect, because FS Captain is basically just about flying. And I will now turn it over to Peter to talk about how he came along. Well, yeah, my uh, dream was never really to become a pilot, but I was really fascinated by uh, aviation and the aviation industry and the rigor of the processes that are involved there. And so uh, even when I was pretty young, my wife and I, we lived in a, in, in a single room and I drove her crazy by working on my own maps for Flight Simulator 2 uh, until 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so that never stopped. And then at some point I discovered FS Captain and uh, I really loved it. And I loved the depth of the program. And uh, I think at that time around uh, Dutch and Travis uh, uh, were a little bit under the weather. And I just kind of took over the forum and helped people as good as I could. And then, uh, yeah, a half a year later, I was part of the team. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys are a group of very passionate people and I can definitely attest to the fact that you, you know, FS Captain is a great system and it has a lot of depth to it that really gives you a sense of context, gives you a reason to fly, and I it definitely improves my flight uh, experience. So awesome product, you guys. So uh, moving forward a little bit, um, you know, we kind of obviously described how FS Captain came to be and the team came to be. Um, what are the basic features that in incorporates? All right. Um, first of all, uh, I should note that FS Captain is a, is a single program that uh, that runs under FS9, FS2004, runs under FSX, and also under Prepared version two and version three. Um, but what it does, the, there's an overall goal or an overall philosophy to FS Captain, and, and that is to sort of fill in the gaps and the pieces that were missing from Flight Simulator to make it a fully professional environment. Some of the things we add, other products also add. For instance, we give you passengers, and the passengers will react to the way you fly. We give you a flight crew. We give you a cabin crew that serves the passengers. You know, all that stuff is reasonable. But we, we also add some things that are a part of professional flying that other products might not do so. Uh, one, uh, very important, is the dispatcher office for your airline. Um, you're, you're not only, you not only have a flight crew, but you're also in constant communication with your dispatcher office. And they approved your flight. They check and make sure everything's okay. They approved your planning. They provide weather services, warnings, all kinds of things to help you out. One of the goal, is, you know, it may sound like, oh, gosh, that's, that makes everything so much more complicated. But in fact, I really enjoy my communication with the dispatch office. It helps me fly, helps me fly professionally. Besides the dispatch office, we provide a career to the extent that you meet your company policies 
and keep your passengers from complaining about you. You will advance up the ladder of your career. We have a 10 stage ladder. You start at the bottom, work your way to the top. It can take quite a long time to do that. I, I, I have not reached the top yet. I've been doing this for six years. I, I fly for two different airlines, so dividing between them in the, my limited time. But I, I try to fly every day or every other day. And it just gives me something, a reason to fly. I think um, Travis said that. I, I can't even imagine flying an airplane flight sim without the FS captain now. I mean, it gives me something to do. It gives me a flight assignment. Here, do this, fly here, there. Um, and, and it's not just yeah, flying passengers. It's uh, cargo flights as well. Sometimes I don't want to have passengers on board because they'll complain. They'll be unhappy. We have to give them crackers and sodas and peanuts, you know, whatever. But if you're flying just a cargo flight, everything's nice and quiet. But you have to pick up your cargo and deliver it where you need to be. And sometimes the cargo is fragile. It has to be delivered on a priority basis, which means you cannot be late. You must meet your time schedule. And if you're not, you'll get dinged for it. You'll get demerits. Um, if you come in early, you'll get extra points, and that will help you in your career. So it's basically a very living environment, and we try to provide things that Flight Simulator doesn't provide. For example, if I wanted to fly in Flight Simulator by itself into a hurricane, I can. not Using any of the weather engines, I can fly into a hurricane and land in the middle of a hurricane, which... As an ATP, as an airline transport pilot, you would never do. They would divert you. They would send you somewhere else because you have to keep your passengers, your cargo safe. FS Captain applies real world experiences to the flight simulator environment. And that's my take on it there. I, I, yeah, I do want to mention an, another feature that Travis has been very much involved with, and that's the weather enhancement, a weather hazard enhancement. Uh, Flight Simulator does simulate icing in a very mild way and uh, and thunderstorms and, and bur- uh, doesn't simulate bird hazards. We add all those things to Flight Simulator so that icing is something you have to DS your airplane in the in the, uh, in the wintertime. You, you, if you take off with ice on your wings, you're going to have a bad experience. Um, similar to flying to a thunderstorm or hurricane, um, first of all, you'll be told you need to divert. As a captain, you can override that. You can say, hey, you know, I, I think I can do this, but um, you are not advised to fly into those conditions when using FS Captain. It will uh, be a more realistic experience. I, I've definitely found all those statements to be true while using FS Captain, guys. I, uh, I've had icing situations. I've had a dual engine failure thanks to ice. I've had any number of interesting things happen to me, and it's all thanks to FS Captain. So it's it's been a you know a good product that's added a lot to my experience, and I think it would add a lot to other people's experiences as, as well. So um, when you're going about the development of FS Captain, what what tools do you use to do that? Is it C plus plus, or how do you how do you work on the code for that? It it's, is entirely C plus um, plus. I'll, I'll I'll start and let Travis uh, carry on and, and Peter too. FS Captain itself is written entirely in C plus plus because that's a language I'm familiar with uh, from software development way back. It also provides a lot of efficiency and there's a lot of already written examples of interfering interfacing uh, C plus plus to for the flight simulator world. So, which uh, for all those reasons, I chose C plus plus for FS Captain. There's one element um, in FS Captain that uh, we've added this year. Uh, for a scenery scanner that will take the um, Pete Dowson's Make Runways, uh, Runways Text file, it, um, our scenery scanner will uh, read that and create our airport database. And scenery scanner is written in Microsoft.net. I'm a corporate IT developer, architect, whatever you want to call it, and, and that's what we use there. But yes, uh, for FS Captain itself, Everything that interfaces with a simulator is in C++. Uh, we also use things like uh, Notepad++ and even good old Excel just to take uh, uh, CSV files and format them to um, be our configuration files. 
And Peter should chime in here because he's working on a really exciting uh, addition staff as captain in the economic area, and he uses his own tools, and we can let him talk about those. Well, it's essentially all the C++, uh, except that I try to uh, keep that the economic module to be, let's say, platform independent. So most of the time, I'm actually developing on a Mac, and then from time to time, I uh, show the, the other people my work, but it's all entirely written in C++ and the compilers that are available uh, on Mac and on Windows by Microsoft and, and Apple, respectively. Yeah, I know C++ is kind of the game industry standard, and it seems to apply in the flight sim industry as well. So uh, looking back uh, through all your experience in the coding and all the stuff you've done, guys, um, what would you say to people who might be interested in getting into flight sim development? I would say pick a project that you would like to see done. Maybe you want to see a particular gauge that has been implemented implemented for an aircraft. Or perhaps you want to uh, Dakota and uh, some kind of, uh, I, I can't think of, weather thing. Whatever. Whatever you want to do, whatever passion you might call you, go for that and start experimenting. But don't try not to reinvent the wheel. There are many examples out there. And there's a lot of advice on fsdeveloper.com and on appsim.com from other developers that can solve a lot of problems for you. I've relied on the wisdom of other flight simulator developers. They're uh, very generous with say, oh, I did this, don't do that, or, uh, or do it this way. Uh, FS Captain has greatly benefited from the experience of others. So um, interface with the developer community. And develop something you're interested in. Make it small. Make it simple. It will seem complicated at first. And a flight simulator can be a very quirky environment to work with. There's no doubt about that. But once you get those quirks under control and start small and then build on it, and uh, you'll find yourself learning and growing. And it's actually quite a lot of fun. Start with the SDK. Read that. If your uh, passion takes you to developing a gauge, Uh, You can learn from the XML gauge structure, or if you're a developed programmer and you, well, if you have C++ experience, go for that. Yeah, I would actually differ uh, from the other two guys in that uh, it really depends on what you want to do. So maybe you're uh, really good at drawing textures, for instance, then you don't need to know anything about programming as long as you can team up with somebody who can uh, put these textures into polygons and uh, then build a beautiful plane or whatever. Uh, For me personally, for instance, I never had to look into the SDK. Uh, I just piggyback on Evers Captain with the economic module, and all I need to do is to do C++ and some web page development development and, and uh, JavaScript and PHP and so, uh, but it serves my personal goals of, of creating an economically interesting environment uh, perfectly, given that FS Captain is already out there. Absolutely, and thanks guys for taking the time to give us some insight into that, because I've got to think that there's a lot of aspiring FS developers out there that probably listen to this, and I know the ESP platform is a pain in the butt to work with. So moving back to the features aspect of it, can it be used to report to virtual airlines? The simple answer is yes. Um, uh, FS Passengers uh, came up with a... uh, I was was previously an FS Passengers user before I started developing FS Captain. It has an interface that was defined and, and Source code is provided. It's basically the public domain. And so in order to take advantage of code, PHP code or website code that was already taken advantage, we provide our reports in basically the same format as FS passengers to virtual airlines so that um, anything that can accept an FS passengers report will also accept an FS captain report. The numbers are not the same. We're, we're not, we don't do things exactly the same way they do, particularly in terms of uh, rating. They use a score system. And we use a grade system, but it can translate or it can provide the raw FS captain data. I'm not a, a, a virtual airline user or, or participant, uh, Peter more so, so. But I will say that we adapt for any things that any VA says, we want something to change here or there. We can provide that. 
Yeah, I'm a member of two virtual airlines and one of them wasn't interested in using FS Captain, the other one supports it. And uh, we've been collaborating with a number of VAs to get FS Captain working with their system. And so generally it can be used fairly well. I have my own system, my, kind of my private VA uh, set up and it just works uh, really well. Just like uh, Dutch said, it's just like with FS Passengers, the same kind of format and If you know how to read in FS Passengers data, then you can also read in FS Captain data in general. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward and easy to use, I've found. And, you know, I can take a report uh, for manually flying from FS Captain and plug it right into an ACAR system for my VA. So it works very well for that. So we already kind of mentioned it, comparing FS Captain to FS Passengers. uh, What do you think FS Captain has over FS Passengers? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that FS Captain and FS Passengers are actually compatible. We have, have had people, and I think still do, use both products together, uh, FS Captain to provide things like a dispatcher and FS Passengers to provide the passengers. It's a matter of uh, taste and preference in terms of how the uh, FS Passengers does. We, we do some things they don't do. We, we provide the dispatch office. We provide uh, weather enhancement packages, provide an interface to uh, – uh, FS Dream Teams, GSX, that I think Trav mentioned. Um, there are lots of features um, that we've added over the years. Uh, FS Captain has been evolving. I intended it to evolve over the years when I started it. I, I think one of my first messages on the forum was, you know, this is a work in progress, folks. Uh, it should be usable, but but you will be able to uh, to receive enhancements for many years. And now, on December 3rd, coming up 2015, we'll be out there for six years, and we've got a lot of uh, interesting features lined up for uh, the next release, 1.8 or perhaps 2.0. Oh. So um, I'm sure Trav and uh, Peter can mention a few things, but we know, we, we consider FS Passengers to be a, a fine product, and, and we don't look upon ourselves as competitors. We look upon ourselves as just another way to do it. Some people prefer one, some people prefer the other, and that's fine. It's a, just a matter of, matter of taste. Absolutely. Um, You know, we're a small ecosystem in the flight sim hobby environment. Um, There's no need to compete against each other. We do what we do. Everybody else does what they do. We try to be a jack of all trades to interface with aircraft, with uh, airport sceneries, with um, weather engines and everything. So I I was in the flight simulator as a private pilot, so I, I wasn't using... Uh, FS passengers or anything like that. But uh, when I tried FS Captain and worked with that, I noticed that it was basically, I have to report to the company. And and that's what, to me, FS FS Captain is, the uh, interface with the company itself. It might be passengers, it might be cargo, it might be a ferry flight where I just simply fly my airplane from A to B, I'm not carrying anything, but I just have to move the aircraft for my company's benefit. The uh, the titles sort of tell you uh, FS Passengers is primarily focused on passengers and flying professionally to please them. FS Captain is more focused on you being a captain and that complete experience, uh, like Trav said, interfacing with the company. So, yep. yeah, that's that's a, that's a big thing. A bit that the, You're playing the same basic role, but... But one is is oriented more toward a, a company experience, and the other more toward a passenger's experience. Not like we we have passengers, and they they are very sensitive to things that perhaps you wouldn't expect. Uh, one of the things that I hadn't mentioned that I wanted to is that for many of the complex add-on aircraft uh, out there, almost all the major popular ones, we read the gauges from the uh, cockpit and pick up. Cabin temperature and cabin pressure and rate of climb, which are all passenger comfort items. And unlike any other product in the flight simulator world that I know of, you actually have to manage those and make sure that you're not displeasing your, your passengers by getting those out of yeah. whack. So Yeah, um, you know, make, uh, busting their ears and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of cool features you guys have. We could probably spend all day just talking about it. Something that I noticed early on when I started using FS Captain as opposed to FS Passengers was that there was a lot of windows, a lot of things I had to manage. Uh, To this day, I still use it a lot like 
someone would use FS passengers. And I'm sure you guys have seen that when you were watching my stream, which is kind of embarrassing. But um, how would you address or how would you suggest people uh, go about learning FS Captain? Because it does have a lot more to offer, certainly, but you have to learn it. So how would you suggest people do that? Okay, well, the first thing to say about that is aviation has a steep learning curve. <laughs> and so um, it's when you go about trying to simulate a professional aviation environment, you just inevitably run into a, uh, in, into a certain learning curve there that, that's built in. We try to make things as simple as we can, but there's a lot to do and a lot of windows pop up. And as software development progresses over the years, we add things on. And perhaps we didn't integrate them perfectly. But to answer your question, the best thing to do is start out small with small, simple flights. FS Captain doesn't make you fly 747s and A380s. You can choose like a traffic loves the uh, Cessna 208. You can fly cargo flights in a Cessna 208 from uh, a couple of small airports. Our um, our free demo version, which is exactly the same as the uh, the standard version, except that you're restricted to six airports. You can just uh, you can learn there just by flying uh, small airplanes to uh, between airports. Build on the basics and then expand your career into passengers, which is adds a layer of complexity. And, uh, and go from there. And as you learn step by step, you, uh, you take on more challenges. FS Captain is very configurable. You can turn off a lot of these. You know, I've talked about this neat feature, the weather enhancements and all that. You can, you can configure all that and turn it off and make it a very simple thing. And you can choose a, a very simple airline with simple policies and then build up. So my recommendation is start small, start simple, and, and add layers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, did someone else have something to add? Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to share my personal experience with uh, trans. Uh, yeah, with going from FS passengers, which I really loved, until I had uh, problems with it. It didn't work together with PMDG planes anymore on my system at a, uh, at some time. And then I discovered FS Captain. And uh, what I really liked is how how deep this uh, this is, and how uh, how much you can dive into. Uh, the details of everything. You can really understand what's going on, so to speak, uh, but you don't have to. So uh, first, I I looked at FS Captain very similar to FS Passenger. So you, you you just do your flights, and the only thing I was missing as compared to FS Passenger was uh, the, uh, the the flight attendant. So are you married, Captain? <laughs> but um, at some point. Um, I discovered, okay, so now if you want to use that economic mode, then you have to get the numbers right. So you better set up your, your planes correctly and so on. And then you, you discover more and more uh, levels, layers of, of complexity in, in aviation. And I was just fascinated by this, that you can dig through this stuff if you want to, but you don't have to. Yeah, I, it's so many cool features. And, it you know, you guys are definitely right. It's, it's good to start small and... I've been using FS Captain for uh, probably two years, something like that. Uh, I bought it years ago and then like put it put it aside. Figured, oh, I'm happy with FS Passengers, and then rediscovered it. And to this day, I'm still learning it. So there's so many features to know about. Uh, one of the features, though, that I know you guys want to emphasize heavily, and a feature that I'm interested in, is uh, the economics feature because. Um, you know, it your FS Captain is built, as you said, around the captain experience, but uh, there's also that aspect of, is my company making a profit? Um, and it seems like you guys are heading di that direction, so what's up your sleeve on that? Yeah, um, Dutch implemented an economic uh, mode in FS Captain that is already, that can already be used, but uh, which is let's say, more complicated to set up. You have to set up a lot of configuration files. And so the plan is to make that much easier and to also add much more uh, features to get a fully-fledged economic uh, model added to FS Captain. So FS Captain is then truly the ACA system and that new uh, economic model will be something like your company. You will be able to hire uh, pilots or flight attendants or uh, administrative assistants or whatever. And, and each pl flight will be uh, will be evaluated according to how many passengers you uh, you had in which classes these passengers uh, traveled how much money you made how much money you expended for for, for fuel and other things so it's, it's going to be a very detailed uh, model of um, of how the economics of a single flight are working and then uh, if you 
add a lot of flights and uh, all the salaries that you pay for and so then how the economics of a of a of an airline is working very exciting stuff i can't wait moving forward here what do you guys in general hope to bring to the flight sim community with fs captain kind of go back to our little uh, statement about making uh, flight simulators into aviation simulators. I've been flying since 1.0, as I said in the introduction, and, and I can tell you that that flight simulator itself is fascinating, but it can also get kind of boring and repetitive uh, at times. And so the first thing we want to bring, our major objective is to bring a purpose to fly, a reason to get in that airplane, to advance your career, to see if you can uh, meet the policies and get the passengers happy. Reason to fly. Also, but to do it in a very professional way, we want uh, FS Captain to to give you the kind of challenging experience that real world professional pilots do. So that once you get up pretty high on that career ladder, you can say, hey, I really know how to do this. I'm, I'm very good at, at doing it. And that's kind of for me, it's sort of a feeling of satisfaction. I've certainly messed up enough flights in the early days and, and I've learned a lot. So it's it's kind of a learning tool, too. You, you can no longer just do anything you want. So those are those are largely my big objectives well i I would just echo what uh, dutch has just said there we want to provide an environment for flight simulator users our captains to make realistic flights in for example we've recently introduced the concept of custom services where if you're flying from country a to country b there are certain airports that have in the real world customs services to allow passengers or cargo to be processed. You probably can't fly from JFK to um, some farm strip in another country because the farm strip doesn't have custom services to allow passengers to arrive. And that's uh, that's one of the small things that we're bringing to the flight simulator environment. Very cool, guys. Um, do you have any plans for X-Plane at all? We've discussed X-Plane. Um, I would not uh, say we have plans for it. We are, we're very interested in expanding FS Captain um, to other flight simulators. Uh, whatever comes along, we, so far we've maintained compatibility with everything that's that's more or less in the Microsoft universe. And So I, I'm, I'm personally very interested in, it, in X-Plane, but right now we are focused on enhancing FS Captain for... Uh, for the Microsoft Flight Simulator world. Fair enough. That makes a lot of sense. That seems to be where the popular stuff is. If you had to guess, would you say things are shifting towards prepared 3D, or are we going to see another sim come along? What do you think? Well, Flight Simulator environment is a very, very complicated, expensive program to develop. At the moment, it seems like... um, Prepared uh, P3D is is taking the Microsoft ESP platform into the future. Uh, I'm really excited with the things that Lockheed Martin is doing and and the developments there. And I see that as as extending this environment. I, I think this is even though it can be quirky and a little bit strange to develop for. It's a it's an amazingly open world in which uh, people from around um, like my, ourselves, developers, can add value. And that's what makes this thing incredible. I mean, you think about it. Flight Simulator was uh, FSX itself is 2000. And here we are in nearly 2016, 10 years later, same base program. But look at look at the value that's been added to all the marvelous aircraft developers and utility developers and, and artists and this whole community that's come together in, in the synergy. It's just made for an amazing environment. That is that is a big head of steam. So I really see prepared going forward. I, I, I'm not an X-Plane user at this time. I, I'm really seriously thinking about putting it on and giving it a try. Um, I'm glad we have a lot of choices. And uh, it would be lovely to see another flight sim come along, but I, I'm not really aware of what that would be at this point. I tend to agree with you. I'm going to have to get on the prepared train here soon enough. So I know you've talked a lot about your future plans and your ambitions. Um, do you? Are there any other future plans that you have for FS Captain that we haven't mentioned yet? Sure. I'll talk a little bit about what might be coming up because this is some exciting stuff coming along the way. We've already spent a good bit of time talking about adding the economic modes and the, the ability to track your airline's profits and you, the profitability of your flights. Um, the next release will, will co- contain a contra, uh, a feature we call Contracts, which is a mission system. Right now, all of your FS Captain flights are point-to-point. You're graded on each point-to-point flight. And then that that ends. You make another one. The contracts feature will will 
allow a contract to be accepted by the pilot to do multiple flights. Uh, that could be, for instance, um, delivering fuel oil in multiple flights to some remote outpost. It could be flying a sports team around on its schedule. It could be uh, delivering supply, contraband supplies to a combat zone where you could be shot down if you fly in the wrong place. Um, and it, it, you know, to fulfill the contract, generally you will have to, to make a number of flights, but the the contract specifies something to be done, like deliver 20,000 pounds of fuel here. Well, you choose the aircraft, you choose everything to fulfill the contract. Um, but your goal is to fulfill it, and you'll be graded on the ability to fulfill the contract. So we're, we're really excited about what that can bring to FS Captain in the next release. Down the road, um, I think we mentioned user interface complexity. We're definitely looking at... FS Captain 2.0, so having a major overhaul of the dispatch system of the administrator. I've been giving a lot of thought to that and putting some development work into it, and we're going to be seeing that coming down the pike too. But the next thing, next big thing up will be the contract system. Each new version has several different phases. Uh, there are bug fixes, things that we didn't get right originally that we'll fix. It has aviation enhancements, such as Dutch said, contracts, which will uh, enhance the way that you fly, but then also program enhancements so that such things as our dispatch office will be different as well. So there's all, there, there's those three main phases that we can bring to each new version. And what I would like to add to that is that uh, we're really interacting with our users. So if you have an idea uh, what could be improved in FS Captain, uh, you just go to the forum and uh, put it there. And then uh, we consider whether it's going to be implemented. And very often uh, it will be. So, uh, for instance, a recent example is that uh, some people were unhappy with the very rigid um, uh, way how... Uh, you had to put on the landing lights when you were de departing and then you had to put them off uh, at 10,000 feet. And some people said, well, that depends on the company and I want to have it differently. And so that's what happened in the latest beta release. Great point, Peter. I, I would like to make the point over the six years, almost six years now of FS Captain, so many of the things that we have added has been uh, come from our user community uh, suggestions. We, we always listen to our users and they have great ideas and if possible, we implement them. It makes for a better product, and we just like to make people happy. In our last release, we had to change our items configuration file, which defined um, all the items you can carry on the aircraft. And we posted a request to all users, if you've modified your items configuration file, please let us know. We will adapt uh, your changes to ours and update it. One of our captains had an idea that he wanted to fly uh, real-world um, VIPs and groups around the world. So we looked, at, we looked at that and we thought, wow, this is a great concept. So we implemented that as a new concept of FS Captain. You can have a passenger flight that might include a VIP. It could be a politician, a some sort of media celebrity, a Hollywood star, a singer, anything, a group, a band, a baseball team, whatever, to fly from particular airports here to there around the world. And that has been a thing that has really caught on with our user base. And that was just from one of our users' ideas of his own. Very cool. I, I love the way you guys are, you know, you're you're a small team and you have a small community, but you really take advantage of that. And that's something I absolutely love. I wish more developers did that. You know, you're kind of a niche product, I'd, I'd say. You know, not a lot of people know about it or not a lot of people have used it. Uh, how would you recommend to your fans that they help get the word out? How can we, you know, sell the religion, so to speak? Well, uh, we've always sort of relied on word of mouth, um, and word of mouth in the Internet uh, age means forums in uh, the various flight simulator forums around the world. People can uh, post their experiences at that captain if they like it, uh, whatever their opinions are. Um, any mention, uh, I can tell you this, any mention of FS Captain on any of the major flight simulation for forums, will I, you will immediately see a spike in downloads of the trial version after that. 
spread the word. That's the best thing. If you like it, say so. If you like our customer support, hey, say so. It's uh, we, we, we like that. And if you think we can improve, say that. Uh, we we actually notice any mention in um, any of the major fight sim forums. We usually see it. <laughs> One of us will, and we'll respond and and sometimes direct people to our forums. But yeah, that would be my my major suggestion. Uh, the other guys probably have better ideas than me. So. Have at it. Uh, we're, we're not great marketers. We're not great capitalists. We just develop this for ourselves and our friends and our fellow captains who um, follow along with us. And occasionally there's a sale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do have people in our forum, so somebody buys it, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a very happy customer, and I, I think, well, I hope that uh, having you guys on this podcast will help out with uh, getting more people to use the product. Uh, Mitch, I'm sure it will. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, Mitch, do you have any questions? No, I'm definitely going to have to go try it out, though. It's um, Listening to the guys talk about it, it sounds like a, an overall fantastic product to have. It sounds like it just boosts the realism up in the sim so much more than what we actually have on kind of a day-to-day basis just with a default sim. And it just sounds like something that would take your uh, your mental want, your your drive towards to be able to make your sims so much better to the next level and so i'm definitely gonna have to go try it out i've actually downloaded the trial version right now to be completely honest with you guys so <laughs> okay. um, i'm gonna go try it out but it's uh it's definitely on my watch list right now to to purchase the key for it so uh i have no questions for them though if i do um i'll definitely key in at any point just uh, pop into our forums or, or send us an email we we answer everything and just so everybody knows uh, FS Captain is free to use from our six airports, three in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, three in Great Britain. If you fly from those airports, you don't you do not need to purchase it. You can simply fly forever free. You can participate in all of our beta programs for free. If you decide to purchase to fly from every airport, uh, we would thank you. There you go. Um now, another follow-up question I just thought of. Um, you were talking about version 2.0, and, you know, you guys obviously update FS Captain a lot, which is something that I love. Uh, is there? Do you see a point in the future where you would ask customers to pay for an upgrade fee or anything like that? I noticed you haven't done that yet, which I, which I really appreciate. But do you think that might happen at some point with 2.0, maybe? I, I don't anticipate, since I'm the guy that makes those, those decisions, um... I made a pledge at the very beginning that updates to FS Captain would always be free. If you buy 1.00, then, you know, whatever version of FS Captain we come out with will be free upgrading to you. However, um, uh, the economic module may develop into a separate uh, entity that we may charge a little bit extra for because it may be a separate program that interfaces into FS Captain and would be completely optional. So we're yet to making those decisions if, you know, it depends on the complexity of it. And, and these things cost a lot of time and money to develop. So um, yes. we, we try to provide a lot of value to our uh, customers. We, and, uh, and, you know, we're, like Travis said, we might not be very good capitalists. We, <laughs> but my first goal is always to, uh, to provide the best product and, and money comes second for me. So but that said, we can't do everything for free. So I, I can't say exactly how the entirety of the economic module will fit in. It may be a little bit separate, but the updates, Captain FS Captain 2.0, the core product, you'll be able to update it um, when it comes out if you've already purchased a uh, code. Dutch has said FS Captain will always be free if we develop a separate program um, for the economic development or, you know, aspect um, that might be a separate purchase. Uh, we may give discounts to FS Captain customers, but uh, we really have not thought about much beyond that. But FS Captain, if you buy it today, every new version uh, will be a, a free upgrade. That's beautiful. I love that philosophy. And, you know, I certainly respect, I've talked to a fair amount of developers now, three uh, and I certainly respect how much work and energy and effort you put it, guys put in. And definitely, if you're out there, you know, in the flight sim world, and you know you, you know, you don't like prices or something like that, give it a thought. You know, give developers uh, their money, give them compensation for what they do because they do amazing things. As well as well as the shareware developers out there who make 
uh, things that we all use every day, and they don't require you to pay, but if you can pay, it's a good thing to do so, I think. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate it. So, uh, news, Mitch, real quick. Uh, Orvix released ESSA, uh, Stockholm Screen. Uh, do you know a little bit more about that? It hasn't come out yet. I have to stop you there. No! <laughs> It's close, though. It's close. That's the key thing. They released a few more screenshots today on it. And this, I think this is the big move for Orbix. Because you think about the airports they've done in the past. They haven't really done a kind of a full international-based airport to the complexity of Stockholm. So um, I really recommend you go check it out. It's in the Orbix forums. Um, and it's they're looking great. And I can't wait to go pick that scenery up. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to include is the uh, the Alabeo Aztec is on its uh, final stretch before release. And as uh, someone that's going to be doing multi-training in an Aztec, it's definitely something I can't wait for. It's, it's going to be probably on the level of what we want is going to be a nice-looking aircraft, um, and it's going to have the systems decently modeled. So hopefully it's uh, not a complete bummer, but... Um, it, it's looking good, and hopefully it's a reasonable cost. But uh, the, it's been a slow news week in that department, to say the least. Yeah, I've kind of I feel the same way. Uh, Peter, Dutch, uh, Travis, any news that you've heard of in the last week that you want to throw in real quick? I was pretty busy uh, dealing with the new pro edition of the Majestic Dash Eight. Oh yeah, week. yeah, that's same. been a huge <laughs> thing. So beautiful plane. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's start to uh, – well, actually, one more topic we need to cover. Uh, for those of you that have listened to the Unicom podcast uh, for a while, we are no longer the Unicom podcast. Uh, we're no longer affiliated with iFly SimX. It was simply a matter of reorganization and kind of have some different goals than uh, Clement had. So we're kind of going off in a new direction. Um, and it should be pretty exciting. So we're now FS Elite, and we'll be uh, moving forward as FS Elite and continuing to put a podcast out every week. Anything to add to that, Mitch? I'd like to say we're going to be focusing a lot around a community based um, around the community. We really want to engage a lot more with the community. It, it's what drives everyone every single day to want to be able to participate. Um, in-flight simulations. So if you have a community base behind you and you're able to help people out or push people towards the right direction and being able to improve their simming experience, uh, I believe that's our ultimate goal is being able to provide a little bit more. And that's what kind of the main purpose of the podcast is, is to talk to developers and get them to understand uh, or get people to understand what it's like from a developer's point of view and see how much work goes into the, the products they develop for the flight sim community. So um, I think I can say this for everyone. Uh, I really appreciate the guys that came out today onto the podcast, uh, Travis Dutch and Peter, for taking the time to discuss such a great product that they have. Um, and it really shows just how much they care for the flight sim community. And that's kind of the main fundamental of FS Elite, And that's what we really want to drive forward with. I completely, completely echo that sentiment. Um, again, thank you guys, uh, Peter, Travis, Dutch, for coming on. Um, anybody have any shout outs before we get out of here? I think, I think I'm think i good this week. Yeah, I'm good this week. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a rumor that FS Captain is on a sale this Thanksgiving, so I'll just throw that out there. Ooh. That's come to my attention. Black Friday thing, maybe. Yeah, huh? yeah, it's Black Friday. A lot of things are on sale for Black Friday, but FS Captain is one of them, so I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, worth noting, certainly. Um, well, my shout-out this week, I think, is going to have to go out to the FS Captain team for coming on the show and developing a really awesome product. I I mean this sincerely. I love it. I wouldn't fly without it. I, I, it's an important part of my flight sim experience. So thank you guys. So I think that's going to just about do it for us. Um, this has been FS Elite Episode Zero. Uh, if you have a product that you would like to let us know about or talk about, you can always email me, nicnacjk at gmail.com. We'll get things set up and get you on the show because we absolutely want to p- promote uh, people's products out there and their hard work. Uh, The music is Catch Me If You Can by Attica Attica. Find them at bandcamp.com slash Attica Attica. And until next week, stay safe, stay sane, 
Happy landings. Bye. And guess what? We weren't recording either. So now, oh, yeah. we, well, now we have to completely restart. Uh, but you heard the intro now, anyway. So let's do it again. Mitch, uh, right. hello. Oh, hey, Mitch. You're with us there now. We go. We're good. Yay! We're good. Sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> Skype was good. So should we update people on uh, the changes going from... Uh, the Unicom podcast to FS Elite? I, I think we can do that afterwards. I, I'd like to get uh, to the discussion at hand today. All right, let's do that then. <laughs> so let's move on back to the the features and, and such. Um, hang on, I lost my place. Outtake time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And Peter was right in that. You don't need to know the SDK. If you're an artist, be an artist. You can tell we're a couple of programmers. Trav and I, I can't yeah. even draw a stick man, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more Same into the Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can draw a stick man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, I can. I, I can I can scratch one out. But I, I'm, I'm not artistically inclined, but I can crank out lots of code. So we're kind of yeah. addressing our uh, strengths here. Yeah, there you yeah. go. But... Uh, I mean, it really works out. Like, I genuinely, yeah. I, I, I love FS Captain genuinely. So, mm-hmm. I'm trying trying to plug it as much as I can. I just have to find where I was in the thing. Mm-hmm. Ah, there we go. I found it again. Are you guys ready again? Yeah, ready. Cool. Okay. okay. Um, I would just say FS Passengers <coughs> is uh, supporting Thought the I passengers. Was Let's try Hello? that. I'm still here. Sorry, I interrupted you. I thought I was on mute. Uh, try that again, just the very end. Uh, starting from where? Uh, uh, you, were, you were saying that you hadn't used FS pa- or passengers because you were a private pilot. Okay. Um, not here. I've had oh. my head in Visual Studio uh, coding away, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Code Monkey, oh, that's three deals in Mountain Dew, right? <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed listening to the FSME podcast, please click the subscribe button below for more, or just click one of the links above to listen to one of the other podcasts.